Here's the unboxing of Intel's Atom D2500. This is a prepackaged thing I got from Amazon, Prerex PC. Alright, let's open it up. You can see on top there's a driver disk. And uh, the pack is very tight in here. We'll take out the uh, accessory box, see what's in there. Got the serial ATA cable. And the power cord. And the power brick. And the hardware. Those screws are for hard disk. And the uh, Visa mount. I'm not installing Windows on it, so I won't need the driver disk. Okay, let's get this out of the box. There's the Visa mount on the bottom of the package. I will be using that. I have a nice place for go on the shelf. And I think those tend to make monitors a bit heavy. Let's take a look at the back panel here. Alright, you've got your two Ethernet ports, USB ports, serial ports, legacy ports, VGA and DVI, and your standard mix of audio ports. And there's where the power adapter goes and an antenna mount right there. However, there's no antenna in this model. Let's take a peek at the front. And of course, the front has two USB ports and your regular audio jacks, power indicator, hard disk indicator, and the power button. Now the cooling vents allow you to see through it. It's kind of like those gaming PCs young people like to have where they can see the insides. Here's a much closer shot of the back plane. And the Visa mount side. So let's get the case open. We'll take out all three screws on the bottom. This last one unscrewed. Now we'll get the cover off. Cover kind of lifts. This side that's fighting back hooks in. You can see that's kind of a pain, but I'll put the camera down and I'll just use two hands. So now we've got the inside, you can see a PCI slot hiding back there, which will never be used in this case. You can see the heat sink, the memory module right up there. The serial ATA, we've got to find the header here. And uh, if you look carefully, you can uh, see the heat sink and memory. The header is right back here, and they're right under this connector. Not the easiest place to put a cable into, but you know, that's where they put it on the board. Of course, this ITX is pretty much the same style as an ATX case, it's just mini, so headers are typically going in front of the board, so there's nothing in here. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. Alright, that works. So now we've got to get a disk drive out. I stole that drive from my C7 Chromebook, that's why it's got the blue on the bottom. And I mounted it to the cage with those screws that were in the bag outside. So now we want to run this cable here cleanly so that we don't have too much slop. 
I think this is one thing I don't miss about generic PCs is, you know, sometimes they tend to give you cables that are too long or typically manufactured for desktops that serial ATA cable might have been easier if it would have been about half the length to deal with. You see I've got all this sloppy extra stuff. So here it's mounted. I didn't put the power cable on because it kind of shows you the extra uh, space this long cable is taking up. You've got a shorter cable. You can always put one in. So here's the drive mounted and screwed down. And uh, that poor PCI slot, it, there it is. It'll never get used. At least not with this case. Alright, here's the thing fully assembled. Power connector is connected, so it's hiding the rest of the serial ATA drive cable. Let's take a look at the back plane here. So you can see all the ports connected. The Ethernet happens to be in Ethernet 1. However, most modern operating systems will do a DHCP on both, so it doesn't really matter which one you stick it in. There's my bootable Linux thumb drive. That boots up just fine, and I'm going to use a thumb drive to do the boot up. Here's the boot sequence, power, BIOS, power on self-test. Here's the BIOS, looks just like most PC BIOSes. See the configuration settings here. And uh, it's got a help menu on the right. Standard stuff, you normally know, see power options. Plenty of help, uh, contact sensitive help on the right. I'm going to set the power option to last date since this will be used more for a server. And uh, I won't have it plugged into my UPS. I have a small UPS and uh, I can just let the uh, operating system come back online when the power is restored. Uh, stuff it does won't be that critical, but if you have a UPS, you can always plug it in there and have it set to always on. Now there's another option in the BIOS to make it boot the uh, USB drive. It will boot uh, the CD-ROM by default, or the CD-ROM, the hard drive by default. And if you want to have it boot USB first, you can change it in the BIOS later. So I've chosen PCBSD to do this. And I'm using PCBSD 10 as the splash screen clearly tells you. So installation of PCBSD is very easy. You just, it just asks a few simple questions. Where do you want to put it? Do you want a server? Do you want desktop? Is your drive? Yes and we go off and running with the installer. Then finally when all that installation stuff is done you can pick your desktop size, get the right screen size that's where your eyes I don't always use the highest resolution on everything. Sometimes I have to wear my glasses if I have too small of a font so I'm right over it. Of course that's up to you. And of course, like most OS's, you've got to pick your time zones and all your boot configuration stuff. Passwords are the bane of computer's existence. Someone needs to make something that just reads my mind. That would be much So I'll create an account for myself. And I'll encrypt my home directory. Okay, once that's finished, you can use the account you created to log in. Standard KDE screen, if you've used KDE on other OS's like Linux, it's pretty much the same booting it's been for years. I 
can't remember when they uh, started with this boot sequence. What a lovely sequence, I should say. Alright, now we have PCPSD up. DDE is up and running. So the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to check out some apps. And we'll go to the uh, terminal window first and we'll check out the D message output. Though it's kind of hard to see on the screen. All right, we'll do some application checking. Take a peek at Firefox. And uh, we'll load up the website. See how this runs. Google search is pretty fast. Website loaded quickly enough. Not too bad. And uh, that concludes this presentation. This server is uh, up and running and ready to go.